I am Tommy DeMisa, uh, one of the partners at the Vanguard Insurance Agency. We're an employee benefits firm, so we focus on uh, really working with nonprofit organizations as they review their benefits options. So a lot of health insurance conversations, how they can be sustainable and uh, still provide high-end benefits to their employees. That's the end of the commercial. I run a, um, a podcast every Friday morning. Maybe you've heard about it so far. We're having a lot of fun with it. Um, it's called Philanthropy and Focus. And every Friday morning at 10 a.m., I interview a different leader of a nonprofit organization. That's a hint for everybody. If you're a leader of a nonprofit organization, we should connect and, and maybe you come on the show. It's strictly about amplifying the message of these organizations. Tomorrow, I have a friend of mine, Sister Tisa Fitzgerald, who is the founder of Our Children in Long Island City. She's also a client of ours. And her organization works with families, uh, children. So the our H O U R children uh, is representative of the hours that incarcerated mothers miss out on and lose with their children. So they make sure that these uh, these women get to see their children, and when they come out, then they they work with them to have uh, vocational training and transitional housing. So um, that's what that program is all about. We can talk more about it in a short time when we uh, after we go through everybody's quick introduction. I'll be introducing Christine Deska, who is my my partner in crime, so to speak, on this project and. Um, and her firm with Frank Orzo and my firm Vanguard has been uh, sort of behind for a while now. Um, so we will start with, so excuse me, I'll be introducing Christine and our speaker, Carmen Yazagian. Yes, I did practice. I practiced it like for 10 minutes yesterday, Carmen Yazagian. So I'll be introducing Christine and Carmen in a little while. So Jerry, it, I've told you so many times it's your turn. So Jerry Wade, followed by John DiBiase, please. Uh, good morning, everybody. As Tommy has said, name is Jerry Wade. I am the owner and founder of On Point Strategic Planning, which is a veteran-owned financial services firm. I currently sit on the central board of, new, of <clears throat> directors for Junior Achievement in New Jersey, and I'm coming on to the board for a not-for-profit out on Long Island, uh, SASE, which is Specialized Autism Support Information. I am a financial and special needs planner. I also help with employee wellness by financial education and financial solutions. Perfect. Thanks, Jerry. John DiBiase, followed by Marilyn Tickton. Hi, John DiBiase, um, former executive director at Anabic uh, in Bayside, and I uh, teach at Iona. I will be teaching via Zoom starting Tuesday until I can get vaccinated, in which case I'll bring everybody into the classroom. Looking forward to that. Uh, I recently joined the board of um, Options for Community Living. Uh, our friend Yolanda is the exec there. Uh, we know each other for hundreds of years. Uh, don't tell her she, she's hundreds of years old. Um, uh, we need to talk about Sister. You want yeah, we do. We definitely do. I, she, she, I'm a big fan of Sister T. We'll Happy talk about that. Year. All right. Thank, thanks for being here, John. Didn't know you were with Options now. Totally excited. In fact, little uh, we just booked uh, Yolanda on the Philanthropy and Focus program for March. So excited about that. I saw you pop in, Yolanda. I know you're here I'm somewhere. here. I was just driving. Um, <laughs> There you are. I, I, I hope you're well. Good. To, we'll hear yep. from you soon. All right. Marilyn and then Frank Orzo, if you could. Good morning, everybody. Marilyn Tickton. I'm with Court Furniture. I partner with nonprofit organizations on their housing furniture needs, and we support their mission. Thank you. Thank you, Marilyn. Great way to keep it nice and tight in time frame. Frank Orzo and then Eileen Minogue. Frank, just come off mute. <laughs> oh man i want one of those hi i'm frank orzo i'm co-founder of nonprofit sector strategies and my partner and i christine deska have a board management portal called bell's board to help boards become more efficient and effective thank you thank you frank thanks for all your support and friendship eileen and then terry magro hi everyone good morning my name is eileen minogue and i'm the executive director for the book fairies and we collect new and like new used books and we distribute them to those individuals who don't have access to them just pause one quick second terry hang tight eileen will be our speaker along with amy zaslansky uh in february in the february version of the nonprofit executive leadership roundtable so we're excited about that well, i was going to tell you about it later but i just told you about it now terry magro thank you Again. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Terry Magro, I'm the co-founder and executive director of the Michael Magro Foundation based in Hicksville, Long Island. 
and the foundation is dedicated to the support of uh, families of children diagnosed with cancer and other chronic illnesses. We um, support these families by paying some of their utility bills, medical expenses, et cetera. So thank you so much. It's my first time and I am enjoying everything. I'm glad you're here, Terry. Thanks. I haven't seen you in a while. Hope all is well. Lisa and then uh, Greg Denweiler. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Tommy. Um, I'm Lisa Gaddy. I'm the founder and CEO of Palomine Equestrian. We're a comprehensive therapeutic program in Islandia using horses to facilitate growth, learning, and healing. Glad to be here this morning. Thank you, Lisa. So Greg and then Denise Waterhouse. I'm Greg Denweiler. Um, I have my own investment firm. I I'm on the board of I Empathize that works in the human trafficking space. And I hear all these New York accents. It's 630 in Denver. <laughs> well, I'm glad you made the effort to, to be here with us, Greg. That's that, that's the power of Zoom. Lee, one of the benefits of Zoom, I guess, right? We get people from Denver to show up at a meeting with a bunch of New Yorkers. So glad you're here. And I actually looked up your organization last night. We'd love to talk offline and learn more about it. So uh, Denise and then Lee Silverman, please. Good morning. I'm Denise Waterhouse with Options for Community Living. Uh, we provide housing and support services for vulnerable Long Islanders, people with mental illness, uh, other chronic health conditions, people who have experienced homelessness. Um, and I'm glad to be here. I'm not with Farmingdale College, although my background <laughs> is kind of green. We have a lot of green <laughs> in my house. All right, perfect. Lee and then Bev Weinberg, please. I'm Lee Silverman. I'm the CEO of Habitat for Humanity of Suffolk County. We're the only um, home ownership opportunity program for families earning between 40% and 60% of average median income. Good morning, everyone. I'm Bev Weinberg. Happy to be here from the Philadelphia area. I'm the founder and executive director of Integrate for Good, and we empower students and adults with diverse abilities through inclusive leadership opportunities, volunteer opportunities, and meaningful employment. Happy to be here for my first time. Thanks for the welcome, Tommy D. Thanks for being here, Bev. We just connected through the, the power of the internet, right? I put some, some posts on LinkedIn, Bev saw it, commented, and now we're friends. John DiBiase, please, you need to connect with Bev. I was talking about it. You also, Jerry Wade and Bev need to connect. Angela, ironically, I was about to tell you you were going to be next, and you were the person that asked me to put it in the chat, and I didn't. So if you're ready, you're next, followed by Sonia. Sure. <laughs> Hi, guys. I'm Angela Kaysen. I'm a digital marketing professional with a uh, board volunteering problem. So I'm on, I'm on several boards. I'm on the, the board of the National <laughs> Institute of Social Sciences, the Laurel Hill Association, which is here in Stockbridge, uh, the Blue Hill Troop, Cozary to Lundy. I, someone tell me to stop. Anyway, I work with not with uh, not for profits typically uh, using the digital media to help them raise money and find their donors. Thank Perfect. you for having me. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Sonia, then Beth Buckheiser, please. Good morning. Thanks for inviting me, Tommy. My name is Sonia Carter, coming to you from New York City. No accent, sorry, for my uh, Denver compatriots. Um, I work as a fundraising consultant. I'm with the Heller Fundraising Group, and we focus on supporting nonprofits to raise more money than ever before, predominantly with individual fundraising, whether that's major gifts, annual fund, fund giving. Mostly it's major gifts, but um, we do this with a lot of joy, and um, I love helping people help other people. Good morning. Thank you. Thanks, Sonia. So Beth and then Mariana, please. Good morning. Sonia, I like the way you said fundraising. And Angela, no wonder everybody wants you on their board. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm Beth Buckheister. I'm the founder and executive director of Career Day, Inc. We ins work to inspire high school students through career choice awareness, bringing programs to schools with a multitude of professionals for every background, for every um, academic level student. We are pivoting to virtual as necessary. And our next program coming up will serve over 1700 students. So that's Career Day Inc. And I just found out if you press the space bar, you can unmute yourself. So there you go. Have a great day. Thanks. Great. I'm so glad to be here. Oh, Thank right. you, Beth. Mariana, before you go, I'm going to make one quick announcement because I see a lot of people with my name on on their picture again. I think, Yolanda, if you click three dots in the right-hand corner, uh, so if you see my name under your picture, 
That is not correct. So just click the three dots. I promise this won't happen again. Click the three dots. They'll come up a screen. It'll say rename. And then please rename yourself with preferably your name or I guess any name you choose other than mine. Um, so Mariana, I want to try to pronounce your last name because I was going to just pass, but I'm not going to pass. Mariana Lobo, Lobo Guerrero. Lobo Guerrero. Very good. Very good. Very good. And then Linda Berman. <laughs> good, morning. Ahead, good morning from sunny Florida, ex Long Islander. <laughs> um, I am with a group called I Empathize. I think we are a large group this morning. I have a few board members. I'm on the, the staff of I Empathize. We empower and equip youth and adults to eradicate exploitation and human trafficking. Uh, we're a national organization. Um, I have Greg, uh, Andrew, and Rebecca uh, from our board also attending. This is our first event. We're very excited to be a part of this great team. I'm, I'm glad you found us. Uh, thanks to the internet. Linda Berman, and then I don't know who this 917 ending 1061 number is, but uh, if you're available, hey, Linda Amy. Berman. And it's Amy Fleischer. Hey, Amy. So Linda Berman and then Amy. Hi, Tommy. Thank you for hosting us all for the and also for this informative program. Carmen, I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say this morning. Uh, hi, I'm Linda Berman. I'm the development and engagement manager for the corporate source. And we are celebrating our 25th anniversary this year. And we work to create em employment opportunities for individuals with disabilities and provide services leading to their independence and fulfillment. And we do that for our outsourcing services throughout New York City, Long Island, and the Caribbean. So nice to see everybody. Hi, Eileen. Perfect, Linda. So Amy and then Bob Keller, please. Hey, guys. Um, my name is Amy Fleischer. I'm the development officer for Long Island Select Healthcare. We are a federally qualified health center that provides um, health care to the underserved. My biggest thing I need to tell you all is that we do have did have vaccines in the past week. Um, we got out 400 vaccines. And for you, all of you that don't know, once you get the vaccines, you have to get them out within seven days, or you may or may not get more. Um, if you are in an organization that deals with the IDD population and you haven't received an email from me yet, um, you can request to get on our mailing list if and when we get more. We are taking care of you know, our own first and the, the IDD population. You can email COVID vaccine at lishcare, L I S H C A R E dot org. That goes to me. Tell me what you need. I'll get back to you and we'll get you on the mail, the waiting list. Uh, we're waiting to find out what, when our next uh, shipment's going to be. Well, see, that's thank Amy. Thank you for that share because this is a resource group. It's certainly an opportunity for thought leadership, but for me, it's community and that's, that's big. So COVID vaccine at L I S H C A L I S C. What did I say? No. H L I L I S H C A R E dot org. Dot org. COVID vaccine at L I S H C A R E dot org. So jot that down. Can you put that in the chat? Yeah. Would, could you do that for me today? That would be helpful. I'm 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 getting out of my car and going into work. I'll sign in and I will get everything into the chat. All the information. Oh, cool. All right. Awesome. All right. I'm signing you off now. I'll be back in a minute. I'll see I, we will let you back in. I promise. Bob. Keller. Oh. Hey, Tommy. Good morning. And thank you so much for putting this uh, together. This is a really timely topic for all of us. Um, I know a number of people who are on the call this morning and, you know, um, I serve as executive director for NAMI Queens Thanks. Nassau. And we're a provider of mental health uh, programming and support group services for individuals who are dealing with mental health conditions and, and their families. And I think we find ourselves in a, in a place where the need for what we do has never been greater. I, I oh, think we, so we, we, we all know somebody who is suffering um, you know, from uh, mental health issues during this pandemic. And the issue for us um, is, uh, is is fundraising right now. You know, we've we've lost like uh, uh, most of us our ability to do in person uh, programming. We're trying a number of di digital uh, methods for fundraising, and uh, we hope uh, to learn a lot uh, here this morning and take some lessons from the business world on uh, how we can improve that aspect of our work. Bob, I just got to bring you back. Just, just the time today. I, 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 
I promise we, we'll get you uh, we'll get you more time when we can. I got you, Bob. Yeah, no, Sorry, I just I I hate cutting people off. I just I don't. No, know. you didn't. I I I, fin I finished my soliloquy, so thank you. Tom. Well, I actually just I I had uh, Dr. Larry Grubler recently. I interviewed him on my podcast, so we, we're certainly um, you know aware of the mental health issues in this country right now. And and thank you for being here and being part of what we're doing, um, Yolanda. And then I see somebody with my name, so we'll we'll have to skip that person, but I'll mention it again. So Yolanda and then Danette. And Danette, when you come on, could you just talk a little bit about the nonprofit resource hub as well? So Yolanda Rabano gross Good morning. Thanks, Tommy. I'm Yolanda Rabano gross I'm the CEO over at Options for Community Living. Denise described us beautifully already, but we are a non-for-profit uh, based out of Ronkonkoma um, that serves people with chronic physical and mental illnesses through housing care coordination, case management, uh, financial assistance programs, just to name a few things, and happy to be here. Perfect. Thank you so much. So, Danette, before you jump on, Danette and I actually, this, this years and years ago, we did these nonprofit roundtables, Danette. I mean, it goes back to like five or six years ago. So, how far? Exactly. Right? So, tell us who you are and uh, talk about the nonprofit reason. Uh, if we could. I think I got this hair across my head. <laughs> Hi, my name is Danette O'Connell. I'm the CEO of Triumph International, where we provide uh, finance and operations and growth to nonprofits. So I help uh, nonprofits with growth. The other part of me, the other side of me, I am the president and co-founder of the Nonprofit Resource Hub, where we provide resources to nonprofits. So if you are a nonprofit, please go to www.nonprofitresourcehub.org. I'll put it in the chat. It is free for nonprofits to sign up, and there's lots of benefits to being a member. Thank you, Danette. I see a, uh, a second Eileen Minogue name. So if you, uh, if you, if it says Eileen Minogue when you look at your screen, um, please come off mute and introduce yourself. And then we will move right over to then uh, Mary Lee. Uh, will be our next to introduce uh, herself. So Mary Lee, please introduce yourself. Just come off mute, Mary. Good morning. Um, thank you, Tommy, for the invite to this uh, very interesting group. I own an IT services company, and we've been in business for over 20 years, helping nonprofits work through the technology challenges and help them streamline and improve uh, their technology by using it and making great solutions, we hope, to um, get your budgets in order and uh, plan your next technology moves. Um, and my company is Innovative Microsystems Consulting. We're located in Westchester, but we work a lot with Queens and um, Long Island, as well as New York City. Perfect. Thank you, Mary. Folks, let's do it. Our best just kind of name organization and maybe a quick piece about the mission statement just so we can get everybody in. So um, Melissa Greenberger and then Lori Barad, please. Morning. I figure out mute still. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Melissa Greenberger. I'm an attorney at Pro Bono Partnership. We're a nonprofit organization that provides free legal services to 501c3 nonprofit organizations. Most of our clients are small to medium size, either on Long Island, um, in the Westchester, Lower Hudson Valley, or Upper New York, um, outside of New York City. We also work in New Jersey and Connecticut. It's awesome to be here this morning. I love this group. Um, and it's so nice to see many of our clients here this morning. Um, if you don't uh, already know about Pro Bono Partnership, please feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to speak with you. Thanks. Thanks, Melissa. Everybody on my screen has moved to another place. So this is this this is fun. Here we go. I found Lori. So Lori and then Sherry, please. Hi, I'm Lori Barode. I'm the Human Resources Director at Options for Community Living. And my colleagues have explained our organization very well. So I won't take up time with that. Thanks, Lori. Thanks for being here. Love your organization. I'm glad you're here. Sherry, and then uh, it, it says Lee Israel is the next person. <laughs> 
Hi, I'm Sherry Goldman. My company is Goldman Communications Group. We're a public relations marketing communications agency working with a lot of nonprofits. So we help them with their messaging. We help them get awareness for their mission and the work they do, whether editorial coverage, you know, getting publicity, helping them get out in the community and make people know what's going on. We do a lot of writing services for them. So anything that helps you tell your story, that's what we do. Thanks, Sherry. And Sherry was actually uh, did was one of our speakers here on the program uh, with regards to the public relations area. So good to see you again. Thanks for being staying part of the community. So it says Lee Israel, um, and then I'm going to take you off, you're off. Just come off mute, introduce yourself, and then Susan Steinhardt after that, please. Good morning. Um, I'm so pleased to be here with you and to meet you all. Uh, I'm the first vice president of NAMI Queens Nassau. And I'm co-chair of the fundraising department. So I'm so happy to have this opportunity to meet so many people who can help me with fundraising because it's a dire issue right now. Unfortunately, I'll be tuning out a lot. I'm not home. I'm um, needed by my mom today, but I'm going to be with you as much as I can. Thank you. Oh, we're going to record it. What's your name? I don't know your name. Lee though. Israel. Lee Israel. Okay. Thanks, Lee. All right. I just wasn't sure if we had that right with the names. I screwed everything up before. Sorry. All right. So Susan and then Myrna, please. Hi, I'm Sue Steinhardt, and I'm the Director of Compliance and Quality at Options for Community Living. There's several others of us here. So again, I'm not going to describe our agency, but I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much. Options really coming in strong today for sure. So um, I have, uh, so Myrna yeah. and then Shell Thompson, please. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Myrna Gall. I work for Annabec. We serve people with developmental disabilities, helping them access um, programs and uh, day services. Um, so hi, John. Um, I know you're, you're at the meeting. Thank you for having me. This is my first time. Thanks. Thank Thanks for being here, Myrna. Appreciate it. Uh, we're going to go to Michelle Thompson and then Betty Versek, please. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Michelle Thompson. Um, my pronouns are she and her. Um, I work for Judson Memorial Church. I'm the director of arts and community engagement, and I also support um, some of our development efforts and fundraising. And I was invited by Sonia Carter, who's um, been our, one of our consultants. So I'm grateful for the invitation. Um, we are a 132 year old landmark built, um, church, but we are very, very unique in that we open up our space to a lot of nonprofits and activists and artists. And so I'm really grateful to be here with you all. Thank you, Michelle. Where's the church located? Um, we're in Greenwich Village, um, right near NYU downtown, oh, perfect. right where Washington Square Park is, like the south side. Of the Very cool. I, I'd like to uh, use the facilities for, you know, for organizations down the road when we're allowed to do things like that again, you know, when they let me, mm -hmm. when they let me out of my attic, you know? <laughs> uh, we're all right. Cool. I appreciate it. So thanks. And thank you, Sonia, for uh, paying it forward and making the introduction. I appreciate you doing that right on. So, <laughs> so Betty, and then Rebecca Gibson, please. Hi, good morning. Um, my name is Betty Vertek. I am a consultant and freelancer. I bring expertise to nonprofits and member associations. Um, I kind of specialize in fundraising, revenue op optimization, communications and marketing. And my special sweet spot is um, corporate relations. I raised more than $2 million in event sponsorships. And I kind of love, love that field. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Betty. So people keep popping in, so people keep moving around. Like <laughs> Got to mute you out. Hi, uh, Rebecca. Rebecca. <clears throat> yes. Yes. Sorry. Okay, so Rebecca, can you guys hear me fine? Yes, we can now. Perfect. Okay. Thank you, guys. Um, Rebecca Gibson with I Empathize. I'm a board member. We're connected with you guys through Christine and Frank. I'm really happy to be here. I have not been able to make it out to Long Island for any of the roundtables. So we are super fans of Zoom because we're a national organization and that's how we meet up anyway every week for our board member, board meetings, staff meetings, et cetera. So um, we do have three others, uh, Mariana, Greg, and Andrew Ewan on with us today. Thanks for being here. Thanks. Uh, and and just, I love new people connecting with us. It's That's my whole thing. It's about connecting. So. Kira, and then Lauren Marzo, please. Hi. 
What's going on? I can hear you. What's going on? Not much. Hello. I am uh, Kira Jensen. I'm from Mercy Haven, and we are a mental illness housing um, organization. I don't want to go on too much. Um, I will say hi to everybody. I know you're running behind schedule, Tommy. We're, we're good, Kira. Thank you so much. I just did things. You got it. People keep popping in. And I have to like figure out where they move around on my screen. Yeah, good luck with that. I'm trying, man. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm right. Lauren Marzo, my buddy. What do you got? All right. Hey, my buddy Tommy. <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Lauren Marzo. I'm the Chief Development Officer of the Viscardi Center. We're a nonprofit that serves children and adults with all types of disabilities. I'm working on um, some big events right now, all virtual, of course. And uh, of course, I also do major gifts and plan giving and, and corporate fundraising. So it's Big job, but uh, it's a great cause, and I'm happy to be part of this whole group with um, you know wonderful like-minded colleagues. So, thanks. Thank you, Laura. We appreciate you being here. Who um, whose number is four zero seven and uh, thirteen eleven? If you can hear me, introduce yourself quickly if you don't mind. That's Ariana from I Empathize. I just had to switch oh, over to my phone. Okay. So sorry. It's all good. Thank you so much. All right, has uh. Is, has there been anybody who hasn't introduced themselves? I, I see a lot of people who didn't. Christine, I had a whole snafu this morning where uh, it, my name is popping up on a whole bunch of people. I don't know if you can see it yet. So there's four other Tommy Demise. <laughs> if you haven't introduced yourself, um, we're going to give you one one quick chance to just change your name. Click the three dots in the right-hand corner where you see the little box. Change your name to what your name is. Um, I'm going to give this like a 15-second countdown. Other than that, oh. Other than that, I think uh, if I don't hear from anybody, we're gonna we're gonna get on with the uh, the main stage, the main show. Milda, do you want to introduce yourself real quick, Milda Devoe? Um, I've got crazy construction going on back behind. Give me five seconds on who you are, Milda, real quick. Just oh, name you got it. Hi, I'm Milda Devoe, and I run Pen Prentice, and it is a nonprofit devoted to keeping uh, writers on creative track after they start a family. I just wrote a book. It's very exciting. Look, I wrote a book. It's crazy. <laughs> um, <laughs> me in two seconds. <laughs> that was perfect. That's exactly. I put you right on the spot. You entered the room. Thanks, Tommy. It's good to see you. <laughs> I'm so excited that you reconnected with us. It's so cool. All right, so let's do this. So we're now going to uh, move right along. If I don't see anybody wave their hand really quick at me that they didn't get to introduce themselves, I'm going to just keep it moving. And I don't see that. So I, I do apologize for uh, for what happened. I sent everybody the invitation, and apparently when they clicked the link, it put my name instead of your name. So, oh, I see somebody raising their hand, and their name is Tommy Demisa. Uh, I, yes. Um, Morning, Tommy. It's Elise Arpino. I'm sorry. It will. They will not let me change my name. I got it. I got it. <laughs> Tell us who you are. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Elise Arpino. I'm the executive director of CM Performing Arts Center in Oakdale um, on Long Island. We're a fully nonprofit theater. Um, which, as you can imagine, is an interesting feat right now. Uh, normally, when we are open, we run eight um, main stage musicals a year, Broadway-style musicals. We have children's theater. We do fundraising. Um, we allow uh, businesses and organizations to come into our facility and use us as a fundraising venue, either seeing a show or using our space. And we run educational programs uh, in theater. So we've redefined ourselves over the last year because theaters are still not allowed to be open um, under coronavirus. So I haven't been here in a very long time. It's nice to see everyone again. Um, I miss this group <laughs> and the discussions we have. So I look forward to today. Hi, everybody. So glad you're back in the loop with us. And uh, you were our host back in, uh, back. I guess it was 2019, December 19, which is back, feels like a hundred years ago. But all right, here's what we're gonna do. I'm now going to move on to our feature presentation and I'm going to spotlight and when I say spotlight I mean this is a, a spotlight for everyone Christine and I think I can spotlight you're on the spotlight I'm gonna and I want to find Carmen because I learned this this morning that I can spotlight you both this is quite scary Tommy you did not warn me about a spotlight well it's, it's <laughs> where I just well it might not work if I can't find Carmen anywhere it's like it's Sissel beautiful, DeMille. Christine. Are you ready for your close-up? <laughs> that's a close-up, but you look wonderful. <laughs> Can you see just the, just the two of them right now? Oh, that's much better. Thank you. Hi, Carmen. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to see you, Christine. 
spotlighted. Good to see you, Carmen. I'm not spotlighted. So it's, it's about you guys now. In a second, let me just close it with this. I mentioned up front, this is the Nonprofit Executive Leadership Roundtable. We do these every single month. What I want to mention to you is every month, it will be now and forever, the fourth Friday of every month, I guess, barring a holiday, but the fourth Friday of every month, we'll get here around 815. We'll do what we just did because that's very important to me that everybody gets to know who's in the room. So by nine o'clock right now is when I want the conversation to be starting. We will be out of here by 950. So book your 10 o'clock meetings because you can get to them. I made sure of that, that that's how I wanted to do that this year. All right, here's what we're going to do. First, I want to read a bio on, on my partner who uh, uh, I tell you, I, I, I've never collaborated with somebody so well that is always got my back and is really filling in the gaps where, where I have those gaps. So thank you, Christine. Christine Deska is a co-founder of Nonprofit Sector Strategies, which is a public benefit corporation dedicated to helping nonprofits maximize mission impact. Nonprofit Sector Strategies provides strategic planning, board management services to small and medium sized nonprofits. And they've also created Bell's Board, which is a board management software platform and a mobile app that helps nonprofit organizations boards become more efficient. Here's a little teaser. Twice next month, we'll be having a, a webinar for people to learn about Bell's board. So talk to me about that afterwards, or we'll send you out some information. Christine brings more than a decade of in-depth experience working in and with nonprofit organizations, foundations, and the government. And at the Columbus Citizens Foundation, she was the director of programs from 2014 to 2016. And while at AARP, she led initiatives for around older adult hunger, financial security, and volunteer management, and also served as a media spokesperson for the organization. She has created several scalable models at her time at AARP, AARP around member discount and engagement. She also currently sits on the board of Hunger Solutions New York, which is a nonprofit organization dedicated to the alleviation of hunger throughout New York State critical these times even more than ever. So thank you, Christine, for everything you do from a volunteer perspective, from a philanthropic perspective, and obviously thank you for what we do here together. I'd like to now introduce my friend, Carmen Yazagian. I don't know why my hand goes up when I say Yazagian, but I was practicing it in the mirror yesterday. So what, what's important to me is, and I heard a lot, I have to let some more people in the room here. What's important to me about this community about connecting and it's about connecting our message and i think when christine and carmen and i first discussed this it was really around connecting the message of the organization to help um really help improve the brand help improve the experience and, and ultimately help improve donations so carmen is a creative director who believes nonprofit organizations can use the same storytelling method big businesses use to open people's hearts and wallets she loves supporting people who do good in the world like you and wants to share how you can do it too. Even the smartest business owners, this is something I, I pulled off of, uh, of Carmen's LinkedIn, even the smartest business owners struggle to describe what they do in plain English. And we were talking about jargon earlier today and, and connect the message clearly. So that's what Carmen does for her clients. So she says, when I'm hired to design a, a company website or a nonprofit website, she says, I'm actually working for their customers. So helping tell the story for the customers. My job is to teach them, the customers, and in our case, donors and, and other stakeholders, to teach them why they should buy from you or donate or support your organization. So without further ado, I'm going to fade out into the darkness and let Christine and Carmen take the conversation from here. Thanks, Tommy. Um, by the way, I think I was chatting as Tommy DeMisa for a good 10 minutes initially. So, um, Tommy, don't take credit for all of my, <laughs> my messages to folks when I first signed on. Good morning, everyone. It's so lovely to see you all. And I'm glad that at least um, having everything on Zoom makes geography not a barrier. And so many more folks can join our, our roundtable family. This is so heartwarming. And we're so excited to have Carmen with us. Um, this morning. Um, for me, when I went to Carmen's website, I. Oh, you got frozen, Christine. Christine, are you with us? Yeah, she's frozen. Tell us how much she likes uh, Zoom. First clicked on a video and it. I'm here. Can you all hear me? Yeah, you, you keep you freezing a little bit. Oh, no. No. I'm not sure why. We can hear you now. We can hear you now. OK. okay. Where's the, oh, where's the tech person? There? I know. Where's my tech person? <laughs> yeah, we need the tech person. Usually my three-year-old. Well, I'll make I'll make this short in case it's something going on in my area. Who knows? Um, but I, I was just going to say Carmen's website, when I first went, 
to her site and I saw a video where she was talking about how all of us need to get better at telling our story, but based on who our audience is, really talking about, really thinking about who we're speaking to and, and, and thinking of it from their perspective rather than telling someone else about what we do and making it all about us. And so it's really the what's in it for me that we've talked about in many of our other sessions, but Carmen really, really delves into this in an effective way. And we're really excited to bring her knowledge to our nonprofit roundtable family. Um, so she's gonna make um, my job a lot easier this morning because Carmen has a really, really awesome deck prepared for us that she's, I think, going to share her screen and take us through it in a minute. Um, but before we do that, I just wanted Carmen to have a moment also to tell us a bit about her story and, and how she came to found her business. And then we're also going to do a little quick poll to see, and maybe we can start this in the chat actually while Carmen is introducing herself since we're spotlighted, <laughs> if that's a word, <laughs> spotlit, and it's just us. Maybe while Carmen's introducing herself and her company, if, if each of you in the chat could just write um, a yes if you have an active marketing plan or a no if you don't, or you could write in between. And then we'll, um, we'll have a sense of where we are. So with that, I'll turn it over to Carmen um, to introduce herself while we see um, what's coming up in the chat and then we'll go from there. Thank you, Christine. Good morning, everybody. I am so grateful to be in the room with so many people who are doing good in the world. You know, I, I put my services to use to people, you know, mainly B2B businesses and would really love to, you know, support people who support others. Somebody said it today so perfectly, lots of people helping. We help people who help other people help people. I mean, I think that's great. So I'll be short about who I am. I, I've had, you know, I call myself the boss lady because uh, first of all, I'm very bossy. And second of all, I love the boss. As you can see from my photograph, I'm a big fan of Bruce Springsteen. So that's all you really need to know about me. Um, this is probably my fourth uh, lifetime career, but one that's really resonated with me because it, it pisses me off to see bad writing or poor communication get in the way of people making money. And that in, certainly includes, you know, not-for-profits or charities. I know they're not interchangeable, but you need to raise funds or you can't do what you do. So that, as I say, I'm hell bent, and I really, anybody who knows me, I really am hell bent on creatively guiding companies to win new business. That's my, my motto. So today I thought I would talk about, uh, you know, messaging, which is kind of a jargony word, but messaging is, is really, you know, so important is to get your message across in a way that makes people feel something. If they don't feel anything, they are not gonna write you a check. And everybody here, there isn't a person who introduced themselves that isn't doing something where there's some real pain, real, real pain out there and you're resolving it. But the way in which you talk about it and then tell stories about it is the way that you make people feel something. And when they feel something, they'll write you a check. So I wanna see more checks coming in for everybody here. So I'm going to share my screen and go through, you know, so I'm going to pause at the end of sort of every section. If you have a question, interrupt me or put it in the chat and Christine will, you know, bring it up. So if, if anything comes up that you want to know more about, or you have a question, uh, please feel free to do that. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay, share my screen. Let's see if this is the right one. And Carmen, okay. just so you know, in the chat so far, we're seeing a lot of folks saying, um, they have active marketing plans, which is wonderful. Um, um, but many who are saying we want to improve our plan, we know we can always be working on our plan. Um, right. And of course, and also a handful that don't have a, a plan and a handful who say in between. So it's, it's, a, it's a wide variety. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm guessing everybody has one, it, whether they, you know, whether it's active or good or bad, you, you do have one. So I agree, it's all about improving it. So can everybody see my screen? Is my screen being is it filled with a big money tree? Yes. Yeah? yeah? yeah. Okay, yep. great. So uh, it, what I find with not-for-profits is they have a very different mindset than business. And if you start thinking like, you know, using the same marketing techniques that I use for B2B businesses in your not-for-profit, it's gonna shift the way you think and the way you talk. So I want you to market like big business does. So first let's talk about mindset. I'll tell you what really pisses me off is the word nonprofit. 
it, it for me it says money making money is not good for me it's a very negative term i've tried to come up with something better um you know you know i know you have to turn your profits back over so that you don't show a profit at the end of the day that's what a nonprofit is but that doesn't mean you don't make money you know you need a modern website you need more staff you need more marketing in order to 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 get volunteers and keep doing what you're doing but if you think we don't have money you're going to you're never going to have money we all know the power of attraction, the law of attraction and thinking. So you wanna think differently. So people in business have a different mindset. So I want you all to have a money mindset makeover. So I want you to go from scarcity to abundance and think of your, first thing is think of your donors as customers. In business, everyone who buys from you is a potential customer, right? So are donors. And in a way, so are the people that you serve. So we're going to get more into that. I want you to think of spending as an investment. You have to invest in your, in your donors to keep them, to retain them, and also to bring in new ones. I want you to think about money as, the, as a means to an end. That's all it is. You, you're going to do what you're going to do, but you can't do it without money. Okay? And also think of money, think of you know, bringing in donations as a really good thing. It's not, I don't want anyone here to think of themselves as beggars, which I, I, I hear it a lot from not-for-profits. Let's let go of that mindset. That's all. Anybody have any questions about mindset? To speak up, yeah. Okay, we know what I'm talking about. Okay. So you can use, here's how you can market your organization like big business. And these are some marketing strategies that I use and other big businesses use if they wanna make more money. So first of all, you gotta understand the three rules of marketing. Marketing, it's really simple. Nobody cares about you. They only remember the problem you solve and they're not gonna do the work to figure out what you do. Okay, those are really the cardinal <laughs> rules of marketing. So if you can, you know, talk, you know, your messaging, I, I hate the word messaging because it's a little piece of jargon, so I'm gonna explain that later, but it's the way you speak. So you want to talk about your donors and those you serve, and you want to keep it simple. You want to tell real emotional stories about the problem, which is huge for everyone here, and how you solve it. And you want to be clear. I listened to all the pitches today, and I got to say, there, we could use some clarity. I want you to use plain English. Use the simplest possible terms to explain what you do, and how you do it. And don't overwhelm people with data and facts. That just bores people and they turn off or they get confused and they say, you know what, I, I don't have time to figure this out. Okay, my dog agrees. Okay, so what is messaging? I, I, am, I have a real pet peeve about using jargon, but as of yet, I haven't found a better word for it. So the, your message is the visual and verbal story you tell everywhere, every day. So it's how you speak. It's how you introduced yourselves today in a networking meeting. It's what you write in your emails, on your LinkedIn profile, in your brochures, your video. All of the communication is involves some kind of messaging. So what you really want to do is, first of all, be clear. Don't use a big word when you can use a, 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 an everyday phrase, just plain English. Be customer focused all the time create emotion, break my heart, break my heart and I'll open my wallet. And of course, be consistent. So if you have 15 people working in your organization and everybody's out there telling a different story, it doesn't work because people won't remember your message. So consistency is also very important. So I was, I just brought up about consistency. Uh, you know, you, you solve some very big problems. We're going to get, I'm going to tell you exactly the problem every single one of you solves in a second. You impact the lives of people, our planet, our neighborhoods, our children, our health, everything. And you also solve a big problem for your donors. So there's two audiences that you're talking to. One is donors and one is the people you serve. So, you know, if you, if you follow this, you'll never run out of things to say on your website. And you want to be consistent and you want to return to the message over and over and over because repetition creates 
memorability. If you think about Bernie Sanders, what do you think when you think for healthcare for all? He is relentless. He, no matter what you talk to Bernie about, he always comes, he'll answer the question, then he starts talking about healthcare for all, you know, or Medicare for all. You know, his message is really clear and he repeats it over and over and over. Okay, so I want you guys to do that too. Okay, so these are the big problems that you solve for the world in general, for the outside. First of all, you tackle huge problems that change, that literally change the world. You, and this is really important, you are the people who do the hands-on work. I want to feel good. I want to help people in Africa. I care about my planet. The elephants are suffering. The tide, you know, all this stuff is happening, but I am not going to get on a plane and go to Africa. I'm just not. But you are, some of you, or you, or I don't want to go, you know, to a community and start building houses. I can't do it. I have other things to do, right? So you are the ones who do the work. And of course, you impact the people's lives. So we all know charities help others, but it ne needs to really be clear about what you do so we know why we should pick your charity. And when you do that, you give donors a lot of confidence in you because they get it and they go, oh, okay, I feel really good about sending them a check because I know how they get this done and I know what they do. Really, really important. Then, this is the, and this is also very important, is the people who give you money also have problems. And if you can speak into this, this is what I was saying before, we all wanna take care of people, but it's really hard. We don't have time, we, don't, we can't go out, we have kids, we have jobs, we, have the, we can't be getting on a plane and going somewhere or you know, running out every day to feed people, we just don't. But we can, we can't do the hands-on work, but here's the thing that people really want, they want meaning in, in our lives. We all want that. We wanna feel like we make a difference. We wanna feel that you know, at the end of the day, you know, when we get old, we wanna feel that our life had some meaning. And if, and if we support you financially, we still feel that feeling of contribution. And that is a huge motivator. So this is something you wanna speak into when you talk about your business is how can you weave that into your story? How do you weave in the feeling that giving you a check for you know, $10 or $10,000 is a way for me to have more meaning in my life? This is tricky, but you can do it. So as I said, most people want to, you know, research shows when it's all in said, said and done, people just want their lives to matter. And again, this is a, a you know, have a life of meaning. We all want to contribute. You know, it's nice we've acquired cars and houses and children and I don't know, whatever, but when, re when re people are <laughs> like getting old, they go, yeah, I wish my life had more meaning. So that is a huge, very deep emotional need in people and you take care of that. So I wanna talk about, I know you all know Charity Water and I wanna tell you why I think, I use this as a case story. I know they're a big charity now, but they weren't. It was started by one guy, you all know who he is probably, Scott Harrison. And I remember when this charity came onto the scene. So what he did was he, he, had a, he had a kind of a raunchy life and he turned his life around. He had an epiphany one day, he tells this whole story. And he decided on his, whatever it was, you know, his 28th birthday, he got a bunch of his friends together. So the story goes, and he said, I wanna start this thing and I want you to donate the amount of money that you are today on my, you know, your birthday. So whatever, 28 or 46 or 15, whatever, small amount of money. And he put it toward bringing water to people in Africa. So his story is really important, but what he did completely revolutionized the way charities market themselves. And here's what he did. Very simple. He connected donations with results. That's, let me repeat that. He connected the money that people gave him directly and in, with immediacy to re really amazing results. So it was the time when mobile phones were first coming in. So he, used, he, he gave all his people on the ground in Africa where I can't go, but he put that mobile phone in their hand. They took videos, they sent in case stories, they texted, whatever it is they were doing, they sent immediacy and connected me directly to the people who had clean water. So all of a sudden I see my $48 
and a bunch of happy people playing and splashing in clean well water, changing their lives. So the other thing it did was he connected me with a larger community. Even though my donation was small, I knew that there were a whole bunch of other people out there contributing to the three or $4,000 it took to build a single well. So my donation, as small as it was, made a difference. So problem solved. So there was a community around it. I felt like I was belonged to a community and I felt it was a difference. And his story was very relatable and very inspiring. Here's a guy who turned his life around to do some good in the world. And he really connected me emotionally to what he did. Like these people, look at these people. They had millions of pictures just like this, real people you know, with a well in their village and they're, they're washing their hands. He has, children playing, splashing, you know, villagers dancing, videos of all of this. And he posted it on social media. So he really used technology and the power of the internet to get his message across. And that was absolutely revolutionary. So thus, so there are any questions about that? I can't see you. So if somebody needs me, just uh, raise your hand. Oh, I has, yeah. This is Christine. I just wanted to comment that it's what I'm thinking of um, as someone, you know, who spent, you know, as Tommy said, a very long time working within the nonprofit sector. You know, on one hand, we hear so much about how the importance of data collection and and how we convey our, our mission impact. Um, and then on the other hand, you know, you're making the great point that we have to convey our message in plain English. We have to convey our message in a way that's simple and everyday phrases and you know like the the new york post is written at a second grade reading level for a reason we're all so busy we just read quick and we need to either get it absorb it or we don't Our, we're, we're pulled in a million different directions so i'm just you know thinking um of this kind of conundrum that nonprofit uh leaders all of you wear so many hats and the challenge that you know when you're in a in a board meeting and you're you're in your jargon because we all kind of get kind of dragged into that after working, um, you know, with myself at Hunger Solutions, the way we speak about hunger in our, in our board meetings is a completely different way than we should be speaking about it if we were talking to someone who didn't know about the issue, who's just saying, Wait, why doesn't that little boy or little girl in New York City have enough to eat? I don't understand. A lot of people are disconnected from the, the problem, let alone wanting to contribute to the solution. So it's just occurring to me that there's, this is a lot to separate in our brains. And, and that's why I think it's so valuable you're conveying all this information to us this morning, because we can kind of take a step back and say, okay, in this, in this lane of my work, I can focus on data when I'm going to a potential foundation for dollars. I need to, you know, put all that data forward and speak in a certain way. But when I'm speaking to a different audience, um, a potential donor audience, let's make sure it's in plain English or however we want to you know, talk about um, effective messaging. Right, I completely agree with you. There is a place for data. There is a place for facts and figures. There is a place for that, but it's not on the homepage of your website. Uh, I'll talk about that, I'll divert a second. Is, is the homepage of your, I, I looked at three, uh, three of the, I just picked three random not-for-profits from Tommy's list. And uh, I, I looked at three different websites and I, I'll, I'll, get a, I'll give you a quick analysis of those, but most of them, uh, the headline isn't clear. I don't even know what they do. They have news, they have a COVID, uh, they, I, I have all sorts of things. But when I go to a website, the first, I have a story with three seconds, you have three seconds, maybe less. It's mostly really a split second to get someone's attention. So if your headline isn't clear, what you do or, and the benefit, your headline has to tell a mini story. So there's a formula to, you know, it, it can be three, four, five words, but it has to tell a little story and it has to be obvious what you do. If, if you don't do that, you've already lost me. I won't, I won't, I'll just go someplace else. And, and this is proven over and over and over again. So, I, you know, I didn't really delve much into headline writing but it's incredibly, incredibly important. And, I, and, I, and I'll pick on a, one or two people. So yeah, so there is a place for facts and figures and data and how much you raise and who you help and how long you've been in, but nobody cares about that. Remember, they don't care about you. They care about the people you serve and they care about themselves. So they wanna feel good by doing good for other people. 
and they are happy to help other people and the people you help have certain problems. So anyway, um, yeah, really important. You, you'll just bore people. And if you bore them or confuse them, you'll lose them. Confused people don't write checks, they don't. So um, yeah, what you really wanna do is what I say when I, when I work for people, I don't work for the, if I'm working for a law firm, I don't really work for them. I work for their clients, their potential clients. That's who I'm working for because I want them to see why they should work with this particular law firm. Same with a charity. Why should, with a million and a half charities out there, why should I give my money to this one? It's a big, it's a big deal. I think most not-for-profits attract people who have a similar experience. If you're looking to identify your customer base, I would say, you know, if my brother has diabetes, I'm going to be attracted to donating money to diabetes or if someone, you know, that kind of thing. So if you have a personal story around it, you're much more likely to be attracted to that particular not-for-profit, right? If you really care about the environment, you're going to look, you know, you're going to look to give, donate money to someone who's doing that, right? So that's how you identify your, your audience. That's all I can say about that. So, so you really want to teach people the problem you solve, why they should buy from you and how to donate. Really simple. It's the cardinal rule of marketing. So what's going on here? Okay. Okay. So I would say, you know, be revolutionary. Don't be afraid to get emotional. I find most not-for-profits and I, and I saw most of you who introduced yourselves today, very formal, very formal. I, you didn't break my heart. I want to know people who, who are building, you know, community, there's a bunch of you, uh, for, to get, there's an organization that I looked at, that builds, here it is, uh, options for community living, a whole bunch of you on here. So instead of, you know, saying, you know, we provide services for housing, just say we get people off the street and get them to be homeowners or, we build up communities, we regenerate communities, revive communities by making more people homeowners. I get that right away. Yeah, that's important. Now I see that that having, I immediately get your story. So that's how I want you to talk. And it's emotional because I don't want to see people out on the street and I want to see communities revived. I care about that community, communities and queer. I don't know what to do about it. I, I don't, it's horrible. I hate it. And I want to, and it keeps me up at night, but how do I help? So if I know that you're out there making more people homeowners, which makes a community very stable, ah, that I get. And that makes me feel good. So I want you to, I want you to really think about how you bring meaning to people's lives and don't be afraid to break my heart. Here's the other thing, successful business connect their product or service to a positive result, just like Charity Water. They, they have this thing where they build wells and all of a sudden there's a lot of happy people with clean water. I mean, that is so basic. People love to win. When they see their money go to good use, they feel good. So the, the other thing about marketing is to focus on one main idea and repeat it over and over and over again, like Medicare for all, Medicare for all. When we think of Bernie Sanders, it's like plastered across his face, you know, his head, Medicare for all. And then also, of course, focus on benefits. Can't stress that enough. And of course, be consistent because when people think of giving, they're gonna think of you. It's gonna be in their memory. And, and so that's, that's kind of where I am. You know, I, I, I'll take any questions you have or comments. I was gonna, I was gonna, uh, um, I was gonna pick on uh, options for community living on their website and um, I'll pick, and and uh, so the first thing I know, and, and this is, and I don't mean to pick on anybody, but here, let me, let me stop sharing my screen. So yeah, I don't want to pick on anybody and say it's good or bad. I mean, this is the way we're brought up to speak that if it's kind of formal or we plaster people with information, it's going to get, it's going to make a difference. It does, but not in the way we want it to. So for, for me, I would say uh, what you can use here is some clarity. I want to know that you, that you, you know, stabilize communities, regenerate communities by making more people homeowners. 
then go into detail. I saw a slideshow with five, six different slides, Gandhi, quote from Gandhi, an impact statement, message from CEO. That does not move me emotionally. Get rid of that and put in a clear headline and message. Uh, and I also had really no idea what you do. I had to dig around quite a bit. Most people won't have the patience to do that. Um, you know, that kind of thing. And, and, and the one, you did have a really nice big donate button in the upper right-hand corner, which is very important. Some of you did not. The ones I poked around at didn't. I'll tell you the other one that really surprised me. Hey, Carmen, wait, before you move on to another organization, yeah. I just want to acknowledge uh, the incredible work of options. And we actually had a roundtable in their space, I think one of our last ones before we went virtual. And what, what I remember from, from that, among you know, many things, Ken Serini was our guest. It was well attended. It was a, just a wonderful feeling. I remember the feeling I had after that session. But also we watched the video that they had just um, launched about the story of their work. And I remember walking out of there pretty much in tears. So when you talk about, you know, break my heart, I remember that video. I remember some of the people in that video. And so I think what a lot of us in the nonprofit sector struggle with is we have this messaging, we have these powerful clips. How are we positioning them, right? So someone like you who goes sees that right away. And I think kind of, you know, we're also overwhelmed, especially now in COVID times. So some of us have these things in disparate places. Some of us are probably thinking, wait, how could I kind of reframe some of my messaging to be a little bit more emotional, to tap into that emotional need? And it, it's, and it also comes with a little bit of, I don't know, for me, when I think back, you know, I was being pressured at one point to basically put, for lack of a better word, a victim up at a press conference, right? Someone who's been personally affected by an issue. And you, you want to be sensitive to people who are struggling. At the same time, no better messenger than someone who's been personally affected by an issue. And that can also be difficult, but it is the most effective way for um, the press to pick up your story, for people to see who's being affected. Um, but these things, you know, cause us to kind of examine the best way, the most appropriate way to really um, connect with our clients and the people we help. So. I, that is a really good point. A really good point is, you know, I think one of the, the challenges for not-for-profits is always time and money. So how do you get that kind of content material that you can post on Facebook or put on your website. So if you have a good video, I don't, I don't remember seeing it, but it, it may not be on the homepage. Maybe that should be front and center on the homepage if it's that good. So you can actually go to the people who you serve and ask them for, you know, I don't know if anybody is familiar with Humans of New York, that, that website, right? So let's a guy goes out and he, and he takes a photograph of people you walk by on the street all the time. You know, you don't know their story. He tells this little mini story. And, and I'm sitting there with a hanky because every one of them is so, he's a, first of all, he's a great writer. Okay, so we want to see great writing in a short time. Uh, go to him. You, I could spend hours there just reading these stories of people. So put, you know, you got a mobile phone. It doesn't have to be professionally done. It can just be, tell me, tell me how having, how does it feel to own your own home? Okay, and just walk around. You, you provide home ownership, right? You get people mortgages, take care of their loans, fight for them when they're getting evicted, all that kind of stuff. Tell me how it feels. Have a video camera there. Ask them for permission, all the kind of stuff you have to do. But that's the kind of stuff that should be on your website. And it's easy to do. It doesn't cost anything. It's just like if you go see the people anyway, just take five minutes and take a quick video. Then you've got all this content. I saw somebody with a hand up. Eileen Imanov, did you have a question? Uh, that is not me. I don't know. Someone has my oh, name on has, there. I oh, have no idea how that's happening, but it's definitely not me. <laughs> but great presentation, though. Good job. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, it that? is. Yeah, wait. Can you see me? No. Oh, it's Amy. Amy. Oh, it's our founder. It's our founder. Okay. Hey, how are you? Can you hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so yes, I must have logged in under Eileen, um, but she is the brains behind the operation right now. So my question is, we are actually looking at uh, going through the process of revamping the website. And how do you 
tell your story in a way that captures just general people who are coming on to look at and see what you do, but still show that super strong impact that donors and corporate sponsors are really looking for. So I think you somehow have to have in there that strong numbers impact that the sponsors want, um, but have the gentle language that the uh, general people want. So how do you kind of make those two things work together? That's a great, that's a really good point. Because like I said, there's a place for that, but it's not your headline. Open with, the headline is not, we've served 12,000 people. It's not, it's not gonna do it, right? So the headline, is, so I'm talking hierarchy on your homepage. Let's just talk homepage. But so I can go deeper. So first of all, you're not getting random people. There are people who have somehow heard about you. They kind of know something, they wanna check it out. They wanna see what you really do. They wanna go a little bit further, right? So the first thing I do is have a clear, short, tell a story headline. Underneath it can be, you know, a, a smaller sub headline, but right in that one space that those are your three first three seconds, really important. If you have a photograph of like people, like you have people on your website, right? I saw that, but they're all just sort of standing there in a group that doesn't mean anything to me. But if you show me like somebody opening the door to their house and like their whole family coming in or something or moving in, I don't know, show me real life, right? So you can use both. And facts and figures have a place, but they can be either lower down or on another page. Because I think um, supporters, first of all, want to know what you do. They all want the same thing. They want to know what you do, how you do it, and then what you need. So, and then of course, results. So results are, but the results can be numbers and the results can also be how you've made people happy. We have a few, you know, tell me a family story. The Smith family was, you know, struggling. They were out on the street. They had a mortgage they couldn't pay down. They came to us, we resolved it. And now they own their home free and clear. And they're able to raise their kids without being in debt. That's a great story. It doesn't, you know what I mean? That that's how you tell it. Tell, tell me what really happened and how people felt. And if you get a little video of them or a testimonial or something or photograph of the family, you can post that all over your social media and on your website. Did, did that answer the question? I think they're muted. I yeah. yeah. Sorry. I, yeah. No, I'm. I'm just working, so I apologize. Um, okay. Yes. Yes. I think the biggest point that I got from that is you can still have your message, just don't make it the headline. So you can still have all the numbers and figures in there that will essentially be uh, necessary for the donors, but. It's just, they more have to look for it a little bit more. They're first gonna be hit in the face with more of the emotional aspect of it. Yeah, show me, show me, the, show me my life is gonna have more meaning and I'm gonna feel good. Then I, I, you know, I'll check it out later. Like, what are you really doing? How much money have you raised? You know, that's, that's the nitpicky stuff. But once you've got me emotionally, unless you have, unless you, you know, you do something stupid, you're not gonna lose them. They'll go there if they want to go further. As a, as a donor, I'm, really, I'm not really interested in how long you've been in business. I'm not interested in uh, you know, how many board members. You, I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in me and how I feel by giving to you. That's what people really want. So address okay. that first. Thank you. I just want to plug that we're actually having Eileen and Amy, the Dynamic Book Fairies duo, as our guests next month. And that is because their organization has grown so exponentially over such a short time. And there are so many reasons why. But just to kind of cut to the chase of what we're talking about now, just this morning, I think it was, or maybe in the middle of the night after my baby woke me up, I saw an Instagram post <laughs> from them doing what I shouldn't be doing, going on my phone at 3 a.m., um, I saw an Instagram post where they, they were highlighting a volunteer who had just donated all of his childhood books, right? So they not only highlight the people they help, they highlight how they're making their volunteers feel good. Yes. And, you know, that made me think, oh my goodness, I probably have all these books I should just drop off. Why am I not doing that? That's something small that even me who you know, doesn't sleep at all right now, I can do that. <laughs> I can drop some books off. You know, and they're consistent with that messaging. Well, so, um, it's funny that you bring them up because the book fairies are the second one I was going to highlight. And I had the reason I clicked on it is I went, oh, God, this is going to be like, 
uh, some kind of hokey site where, you know, they have like pink and fairies and, uh, you know, I don't know, what is this? So I was like, okay, let me click on this so I could be right. So I was totally wrong. And I was so impressed with this. I was going to use it as if you all want to see a good example of, of how to do what I'm talking about, go to the book fairies. So I am total in total awe of, first of all, it says books for all, improving literacy in the community. And what is unclear about that? Absolutely crystal clear, books for all. And, and, and there's like a dozens of pictures, really nicely done of kids like with books all over the place. They're sitting in books. There are a, a mountain and ocean of books. I, I was very, I, I was very, very impressed with your site. That's a great example of how to do it right. Get stories about them you talked about and, and you just showed me happy people and the benefits of having books. It, it just went on and on. So well done. Who's, who's, who's here from uh, books? Books, uh, fair, the book fairy. Who's Eileen? Uh, I see her smiling. <laughs> I, I'm laughing because we're redoing our website, but uh, we're getting Why? ready to redo our website. We're trying to, but um, yeah. And that's the brainchild of Amy. Amy's the founder and she's the one that helped create the website. So. Well, don't, um, don't lose what you've already done. Because, yeah, no, I, she's done a phenomenal so job. She's trying to tighten it, tighten it up. That's all we're trying to do because the message is clear and she's done a great job of that. So that's all Amy. Absolutely, Krista. That's a clear message. I can't, yeah. I, and, I, and I remember it, books for all. Yeah. You know, I love it. Books, it's three words, three words. Books for all, improving literacy in our community. Then what I do and the benefit. Now you can tell me how I do it, how you do it. But those two things are the two most important things. It's exactly what I'm saying. It's clear, I get it, and I see the benefit. Who doesn't love books, right? Oh, and when you hear the statistics that they that the book fairies does so well um, in 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 high in spotlighting, you're even more connected to the need for their work. Um, so more on that end of February. If you haven't registered, please join us to hear from Eileen and Amy because, for those of you who are thinking, well, our capacity is so stretched, right? We only have you know three staff and all volunteers. How do we take this on? Well, Eileen and Amy are a skeleton crew over there. They've done this, right? It's doable. That doesn't mean it, it you know, I think Eileen works all through the night as well, <laughs> but we'll see. Um, there's a way to do it. There's a way to do it even if your staff is small, even if you're relying on volunteers and, and forging the right partnerships. And so um, we'll highlight a lot of how they've kind of taken this path together and really grown the organization. But I wanna um, uh, go to this question in the chat here, um, a specific question, um, Carmen, about um, home pages. Bev, um, thanks for your question. She asks, how do we feel about carousels on the landing page? Uh, I, 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 don't, I don't mind them. Uh, statistics and recent data on websites is, is not to do that anymore because you want people to focus, right? So if you have too many carousels, it's like, what do you want people to do? And if they're confused about even the slightest bit about what to do, they'll go someplace else. So the, so the, so the data is showing, I used to do it all the time and I still have some websites that have it, but I think they're right. I'd say, no, put your main message there, main message, you know, photograph. And then something that, by the way, photography, another really important point is, if you if you if you can have actual photos of, of people in action like what Barry does, or if you don't, make sure the images at least relate to what your do what your headline is. So if let's say Book Barry didn't have one photograph, you know they could at least say you know books for all, and just have book, a big photograph of books all over this. So it relates those to the visual and verbal story have to match. So I say no I say no carousels. I say no. Find another way to do, put the information. So landing page, let me, so I'll give you just a little thing on landing pages. Landing pages are almost the same. They're slightly different because landing pages are typically used to sell something like a webinar or a book or something, and they have a very specific structure. But your homepage can also follow that structure, which is problem, solution, problem, solution. Here's how to get it, call to action. If you do those three things, you know, you know, most people, most people, you know, have, you know, many people have their collection of, of their kids books and they don't want to throw them out and they don't want to do, they don't want to do with them. 
I had that problem. I have like a thousand books. My kids are never going to read them again. Mm -hmm. And if I wait for grandchildren, I could, you know. So what do I do with all those books? I can't, so they're sitting someplace. I don't know. I can't throw them out. So now I say, oh my God, I know what to do with that. I would feel really good. So state the problem, always open with a, a problem. The quit, you know, most people, you know, most when their kids are grown, most people don't know what to do with their books. We do. You know, that's it. I get it. Right. So yeah. Landing page, problem, solution, problem, solution, call, clear call to action everywhere. Great. I hope that's helpful, um, Betty. Thanks for the question. We, I think, are at the time when we're supposed to open up for, <laughs> Johnny, don't you hate to throw away a book? Oh, absolutely. Never throw away a book. Never. I can't. I can't. I can't. I, I can't. They're sitting, so, I don't know, they're everywhere. Would anyone like to ask their question live? Raise your hand or throw your question into the chat. Um, I'll ask one in the meantime while we see if anyone else has questions coming to mind. I mean, what I'd like to ask Carmen is, you know, uh, for organizations that um, have been in kind of an education and outreach mindset and, and, and not really, you know, this marketing mindset that you described, you know, where, where's a good place to start in kind of, and it seems like messaging, but just talk a little bit more about, because there's all of these channels now that we're all, you know, feeling pressure to have the right messaging coming out of it, the right frequency and consistency and then we have our different audiences maybe just a couple bite-sized places to start i think would be helpful and then i'll also ask you for your takeaways before i see if other questions come up sure sure there's no there's no right or wrong it's how much can you do so you have you know pick if i were if i were small and i didn't have a huge amount of people on my staff i would pick one or two social media venues you know one would might be linkedin so that you can attract donors and the other might be instagram you know whatever you feel is right or facebook something like that and just you know bombard people with as many stories as you can tell they don't have to be long they can if you have volunteers on your staff does everybody have one of these yeah make sure so tell them take a picture write something down you know put them to work and you'll be surprised how much content you have. So the more the merrier when it comes to content. Great. That's, I love that answer. You know, no right or wrong, do what you can. Start somewhere, right? I think a lot of us can become paralyzed by not being able to do it all. But if we start somewhere, the messaging, once you have it, once you have a, a, a process for pushing out that effective messaging, then you have it and you can continue to use it. Uh, and what's your books for all? Books for all is your message. You know, improving literacy. So all of your content is around getting books to everybody. Here's a here's a photograph of someone, you know, with the boxes. You know, ask the people that are donating, take a picture of yourself moving the boxes of books somewhere and just put that on there. So it all relates to books for all. I love that. It's consistency and it shows me that you're that you're bringing books in. You keep bringing them in, showing them there, showing them, un, showing the kids unpacking the boxes, you know, anything you can do that's real life is gonna to add to your uh, your message. And someone asked if we'll be sharing the presentation. Um, if ever, I don't know if everyone can see the chat, but we will be sharing Carmen's presentation. And as always, we'll be sharing the contact list unless anyone objects. Usually everyone's happy about that. Um, so if you wanna connect with anyone you heard, give their introduction in the beginning, we share that as well. Um, I don't see any questions in the chat right now. Um, so I wanna give Carmen a chance just to say, uh, let's see. Oh, we've got one from Eileen, so I can. Oh, wait. Linda, thanks. Linda Berman, any tips on helping our constituents, employees with disabilities? Uh, yeah, I mean, it can be written, it can be verbal, it can be. Uh, I don't know what kind of disabilities people have. Um, I think it would be very empowering for them to be able to tell their story. A short video, if they're up for that. You know, I don't know. This is, you know, it's your call how they feel, but uh, that's a heartbreaker. Uh, you know, there's nobody with a disability that we don't already have empathy and sympathy for. So you're already on the right track. So yeah, I love reading those stories, you know, how they, you know, overcame something. Nobody loves a story better than someone who has a disability and, you know, met the challenge and moved their life forward. People love inspirational stuff. So great material there if they're willing to do that. Thank you, Carmen. Great what idea about overcoming my contact information will be on the i'm going to send you know I, I gave the presentation to christine and tommy so they can forward it and i have a contact page there with all my 
whatnot on it. So anybody, listen, I, I just throw it out there. If anybody wants to give me a call and discuss their website or their homepage or messaging, just, you know, I, I'm, I'm here. I have your time. I'm willing to do that. I'd love to do that for you. Carmen Eileen asks, is there a limit uh, on the number of pages you should have? I find if I have to dig too deep, I move away. And that, is that the website you're talking about, Eileen? Yeah, website. Yeah, just give them exactly what they need and no more. Don't overwhelm. I see a lot of them with, you know, like, you know, drop downs and drop downs and drop downs and drop downs. You know, it's, it, it, you know, first of all, don't expect them to read it all, but always keep your main information up front. So in your main tabs, you know, few tabs and then under it, they can go read more if they want to. There's nothing wrong with that, but keep your main information at front and center. Good question. Great question. If you need it, if you need your, you know, your statements or your year end profit, all that kind of stuff, sometimes pe people post that or your board of directors or stuff like that. It's there's a place for it, but just don't make it, you know, prioritize what's what's what do people really need to know? Uh, Linda Berman, ideas for bilingual messaging, keeping that message clear when you have multiple languages. Right, we have a number of uh, employees as well as uh, clients who speak Spanish. And uh, so we do try to translate our documents and so on, but any suggestions for trying to, um, to share both things in both English and, and let's say Spanish? Well, you can install a, a translator on your site that will, you know, if you, if you have people who speak Chinese or something like that, you can install a translator. It's, it's not real perfect. Yeah, we have, we have that, but we've been requested to, you know, have documents that we can share in Spanish as well. And we've done that with our brochures and so on, but any, any tips about trying to, you know, cater to uh, people who speak different languages or even, uh, you know, sign language? Uh, yeah, that's a good question about sign language. That I don't know, but I'm going to guess with technology, there's probably some way to put a, some kind of widget on your site that might do that. Uh, you know, there's, there's a, you know, there are rules for following for the American Disabilities Act, which we also do. So, uh, one thing that you can do for people who are uh, have uh, impairment of sight, can't see, is to, when, I know this, this is really technical, but it's one of the big ones for uh, disability compliance, is when you post an image on your website and you go, you put it in the library, let's say you're using WordPress or something, and there's a little box in there, it says alternate text, alternate text, enter the alternate text in a way that someone who can't see it, the image, can read it. So you might. So there's a lot of tricks to it. I don't get too technical, but it could say, uh, you know, kids, kids uh, surrounded by uh, donated books. You know, the, from the donated books from the book fairy. So you get your name in there. But tell me what you're seeing. Like, don't be afraid to make it too long. But always fill in that alternate text. So. I don't know about sign language, but I think translating your documents into two languages and making that available on your site, you can have a tab for, you know, Espanol and just have a section. So I'd have to see how it's organized, but, or you could just go to the document and say, you know, have a choice of English or Spanish or Asian, you know, Chinese or something. So good, good point. Thanks for that you're doing that too. Hi. Really important. Hi. Hi. Hi, this is Dan Wilder. For people who are visually impaired, you can get a plug-in that will read the text to them. If you go yeah. to our site, lifairhousing.org, we have such a plug-in. Exactly. Great. Yeah, well, the, yeah, the people who, yeah, the people who, but you have to have on your own website, you have to make sure that you have the, uh, you have the text where it belongs so they can read it. So that's where alternate text comes in because they read that. If they roll over an image with a screen reader, it'll read back to them what it says. So oh, and Lauren from the Viscardi Center is, is talking about digital accessibility as well. The Viscardi Center does a great job with that. Ian has a resource. This is great sharing you, you all um, about this particular topic, which is a big part of, I think, what a lot of us do. Great. Right. Um, so I think we have time for one last question. Um, Tommy and I, with our new format starting a little earlier, um, we're so pleased that so many of you could join us this morning. We really wanted to make it so that if you have a 10 a.m. meeting, you could make it to your 10 a.m., maybe even with time to refill your coffee. Um, <laughs> so thank you so much, Carmen, 
Thank, um, you every time. Uh, Thank you for having me, Christine and Tommy. It's great. Tommy, how are we doing on time? I was going to ask one more question, but am I running? Am I, I running? I'd like to keep those questions for next month. Um, okay. <laughs> it is 9.56 and, and it is our intention to have you make your 10 o'clock so people don't have to scoot out the door. So um, I think we can bring it to a close, Christine, if that's good with you. Um, and if you, if, if you have additional follow-up questions, by all means, bring them to Christine and I and we'll get you connected with Carmen. We will be following up. I'm going to cut and paste and save the chat to see if there's any follow-up there that we need to address. Uh, the this series will happen every Thursday, every fourth Thursday of each month. Um, so because I'm not looking at a calendar, somebody could help me out with that, what that would be, the 20-something in February. February 25th, 225. Um, and that will be Amy and Eileen from the Book Fairies. Any feedback you have for us, please share it. It's 9.57 now, so I'm already breaking our own rule here. So I'm going to bring this meeting to a close, say thank you, Carmen, Yazajian. Thank you, Christine Deska. Uh, and, and thank you. Carmen. Thank you so a little round of applause, obviously. Thank you. Thank you. This is incredible. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have an additional follow-up, just reach out to Christine Rye, but we will get you a follow-up. Um, and thanks for all your feedback during the program today as well. Appreciate you all. Have a great day. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Wonderful program. Thank you. Thanks, Carmen. Thanks, Tommy. Thanks, guys. Bye, Tommy. Bye-bye. See you soon.